Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we are going to be looking at creating a simple stopwatch with a graphical user interface. This will be created using the Tkinter library. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is just install some um, libraries that we need. So from Tkinter we're going to import all and then from tkinter.ttk, we're going to import all. And we also want to import time. So now we need to create some variables that will just represent the seconds, minutes, and hours. So seconds is equal to zero, minutes is equal to zero, hours, hour is equal to zero. And then I'm also going to do stop and make that equal to zero going to make these singular. So now we have four different variables. We can now create a function that uses these variables to add seconds to the time. Now, as we add seconds to the time, we obviously need to make sure that once it reaches 60 seconds, it then the second go back to zero with the minutes increasing. So what we can do is because we need to access these, we can use a global keyword. So we can use the def to start and we'll just create a function that has the name of start and we will use global and then we can use second minutes and hour. And this will just allow us to access these three variables inside of this function. Okay, so now because we have these variables, we now want to actually use the time module to make sure that we have the correct amount of seconds between every increment. So what we're going to do is just use time.sleep and we'll pass in one second. And then whenever this time.sleep increments, we then want to add one to the second. So the second will then go up to one and then two and then three for every second that the stopwatch is running. So if the second is double equal to the 60, then that means that we've reached a whole minute and we then want to put the seconds back down to zero and we want to add one to the minute. And then we also want to check to see if the minute is double equal to 60 because if it is then that means that the hour has passed so minute would then be equal to zero and hour will now become one or one will be added to the hour mark and then finally we want to check to see if the stop keyword or if the stop variable we've um, created up here has changed so if stop is now double equal to if stop is double equal to zero, we then want to create some labels. So because we haven't actually used or added one to this stop keyword or variable, we are now just going to be showing the labels. So because it will be on zero, because we're not adding anything to it at all, we will always be showing the zero on um, we will always be showing the labels whenever this start function has been called so now we can create a label so the first we'll just say label with the parameters of root and then we'll also use the text and we're going to actually pass in a f string and the first that we're going to pass in is our and then minute and then second so now we will be displaying the hour minutes and seconds so it should look like this and then every second it will change and it will start adding up and then we want to actually use the after um, method on this label and we want to change it every 300 seconds. So after, sorry, um, after 300 uh, milliseconds. So that is 0.3 of a second. So what we are actually going to be doing here is passing in the start function again. And after every 300 or 
three thousandth of a millisecond, we are then starting this function again. And then we just want to pack the label in, so in the position x of 80 and then y of 60. And that is the start function ready. So now we can create the stop. So we're going to use the stop watch and this will just stop the watch. So now we can use the global keyword for stop and we can now just reassign stop to be one. So now whenever we use the stop button, we will then be changing stop to one and then we will be not displaying the label. So now we have these, we just wanna pass in some geometrics and some actual shape configurations for the, um, for the GUI. So the first of all, we need to assign the TK class to a variable, which we have called root. And then we can use root.title and here we can pass in beginners code stopwatch. And now we can give it a size with dot geometry and this will take a string. And here we're gonna use 200 by 120. And then we want to configure the background. So BG is equal to a string, which will be a hex code of 06354A. And now we can create our two buttons. So button one or start button is equal to button, which will take in root text that says start and a command that says start. So we're gonna be calling this um, start function whenever we press this start button. And then we just want to dot place and we'll place it X as 15 and Y as 10. So now we can use the stop button and that will be exactly the same We'll take in roots, a text that says stop, a command that is also stop and stop watch. And then outside of this, we can use dot place and we will pass in 115 to X and Y will be 10 again. So we're not actually changing the position or the value of Y. So they will be in a straight line. So finally, just to make sure that this goes smoothly we want to use the dot main loop my bad not that one dot main loop and now if i run this we now have a slightly out that was slightly out um if i change this to maybe 220 and then close that and run it again we now have a perfectly good even sided start and stop button so now if i press start Oh, we have an error. So where has this error come from? place okay so i've worked out what the error is so here instead of label dot pack it's actually meant to be label dot place and if i just stop this There you go. And now if I save it and run it again, we now should have a fully functioning stopwatch. And every second this increments, so we will see it go all the way up to 60 and then changing to one. And then the same for the hours. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this has helped your understanding of how we can give commands to certain buttons on our graphical user interfaces, making them more interactive. If you liked what we've been through and you want to learn more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. 
In the coming weeks, I will be releasing a free 30 days of Python guide. So stay tuned and make sure you're ready to claim yours.